Hello everyone, Marcus Stahl here, and today I'm going to be going into part two of this three-part series on the full dive, or virtual reality as a whole. So let's get started. In my last video, I covered what reality itself meant within the definition of virtual reality, and defined it as the physical aspect or the way our mind works to take the inputs that we receive and treat them as reality. This definition doesn't really give us all that much information that we really want. So let's analyze this so we can all get a pretty accurate measurement of what it is that we're talking about within this area. Let's start this off by looking at the senses that we have, all 19 of them. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with the basic five, defined by Aristotle several thousand years ago. Those are the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of touch, the sense of smell, and the sense of taste. So what are the other 14 in this equation? We have the sense of balance, kinesthesia, proprioception, pain, lung stretching, muscle stretching, chemoreception, pressure, magnetoception, time, hunger, thirst, and the need to excrete. The qualification of some of these as their own individual senses is under some debate, although I think we can all agree that there are a lot more than just basic five senses for us to cover within virtual reality now, which is unfortunate as we only have a few methods to really interact with these senses at this moment in time using our technology. So let's have a look really. For our sense of vision, all we really have is the Oculus Rift and the parameters set for the Oculus Rift. Hearing we've had headphones for a long time now, and while I'd say they're pretty good, the binaural audio technology, which is supposed to be used in software, is unfortunately rather processor intensive and makes it so 3D sounds a bit harder to achieve. For basically all the other senses, we only really have rough peripherals or some light implementations, with only really touch getting a little bit of focus with haptic technologies that appear on phones and or the rumble packs inside of your controller. This lack of control over all the senses is actually pretty apparent, even in a study done by the University of California. In this study, they investigated the way rats responded to virtual reality environments in comparison to real environments. The technique they used for this was by placing electrodes inside the brain to analyze a particular type of cell, called a place cell. As you might ascertain, place cells are pretty important in helping us understand where we are in the world and exactly what our consciousness is in a manner of fashion. So, they monitored the activity of rats placed in a virtual reality environment with an equivalent real environment to see how they responded. As the results turned out, the rats' place cells were only half, if not less than half, as active in virtual reality as they were in the real world. Admittedly, I'm not sure rats are the best test subject for something so qualitative such as our sense of experience, but it's as close as we're going to get to a direct metric, and it's not exactly doing us any favors. Outside of play cells, the only direct metric we have for setting a standard on the subject of virtual reality is Valve's own guidelines in regards to how HMD should achieve the sense of presence. They've outlined that for an HMD to achieve the desired presence, it's going to require a resolution of at the very least 1080p, be running a low persistence display at 95 frames per second, and have head tracking within millimeter precision levels with a high amount of refresh rate to avoid drift. So, with these two metrics now out of the way, what else do we really have in terms of defining how we immerse the sense of the body? Well, really, just that phrase, immersion. We need to surpass, if not match, the limitations of our body at a natural level. I think we can all get the point now. There's going to be a lot of resolution to achieve whenever it comes to immersing a single sense. But does that mean that this is the only method we have for immersing senses? I'd say we have another method. Aside from trying to immerse it by providing data, I think we can also immerse a sense by depriving data. Or in other words, sensory deprivation. Our minds are systems that operate by observing change. Whenever something passes by in your vision, you're observing that the light that is coming at you has changed its positioning within your general field of view. Our bodies tend to ignore things whenever there is no change apparent in it in order to focus on more important things. It's kind of like how you can pick out things of high contrast in a picture. We will observe the thing of the highest contrast that we can see within a sense. So. Whenever your temperature steadily changes from hot to cold, you probably won't notice it all that much because it's going very slowly. However, if it suddenly goes from cold to 
150 degrees hot, you'll probably immediately notice that and your body will take action to react towards this item above almost everything else unless a similarly high change has occurred. In vision, you'll probably notice the thing that stands out the most from the rest, as it is the only thing that's really all that different. This contrast seeking leaves us a very interesting position. If there is no contrast to observe, our body will actually stop observing. It's kind of like me right now in this chair. I don't really feel the chair all that much around the area where I'm sitting. Why is this? It's because I haven't changed all that much. I've been sitting here doing the recording and my body hasn't really needed to pay attention to that area of touch because it hasn't changed at all. So it's basically being ignored. Think of it kind of like when you go in a pool and initially the water might be a little chilly, but after a while, it just kind of fades away in the back of your mind and you're just swimming in the water. I'm taking this effect as possible evidence that we may not necessarily have to immerse the sense by providing a substitution or alternative sense of vision or smell or touch or something like that, but instead just turning it off. Think of it like this. If you want a game and you don't want to feel hungry, just eat so you don't feel hungry. Similarly, if you need to use the bathroom while gaming, just use the bathroom so you don't have to think about it. It kind of goes along with these factors, and while it may not be the optimal solution, it is certainly something to consider in the meantime if we don't want to have to deal with something and or can't deal with it at this moment in time. Well everyone, that just about does it for this video. If you liked the video, do subscribe and come back next week as we're going to be doing another video on the virtual aspect of virtual reality since we've covered only the reality aspect in this one. If you'd like to follow me on my social networks, I have a Twitter, Facebook, and a Tumblr listed down below in the description. And if you'd like to talk about the subject, I do have a comment section down below. So do share there since we tend to have some pretty interesting discussions and some very famous walls of text in some degree. Well everyone, thank you for watching this video. This has been Marcus Dahl, signing out.